dear friends and all my colleagues i would first of all like to thank on behalf of shyam prasad and lightman federation every weekly basis as we are appearing with these new episodes which is related to dr shyam prasad these videos are very crucial not only crucial this is you can say the precious things because it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of analysis to bring out all these kind of videos and as you all know guys that this is the time for the covid 19 due to which we do not have that much resources that we can definitely go ahead and support these videos henceforth it's a hard time for us so we would request everyone to support and cooperate with us and to share this videos as much as you can from your end every weekly basis right we have been speaking about the the incidents what exactly happened at that part of time Declaration of 16th of August as the Direct Action Day, acting on the advice of R. L. Walker, the then Chief Secretary of Bengal, the Muslim League Chief Minister of Bengal, Hussain Sahid Surawardi, requested Governor of Bengal Sir Frederick Burrows to declare a public holiday on that day. Governor Burrows agreed. Walker made this proposal with the hope. that the risks of conflicts especially those related to picketing will be minimized if government offices commercial houses and shops remained closed throughout calcutta on 16th of august now the bengal congress protested against the declaration of a public holiday arguing that a holiday would enable the agile folks to successfully enforce hartals in areas where the muslim league leadership was uncertain congress accused the league government of having indulged in communal politics for a narrow goal congress leaders thought that if a public holiday was observed its own supporters would have no choice but to close down their offices and shops and thus be compelled against their will to lend a hand in the muslim league's hartal now on 14th of august kiran shankar rai a leader of the congress party in the bengal legislative assembly called on hindu shopkeepers to not observe the public holiday and keep their businesses open in defense of the hartal in essence there was an element of pride involved in that the monopolistic position that the congress had hitherto enjoyed in imposing and enforcing hartals strikes etc was being challenged however the league went ahead with the declaration and muslim newspapers published the program of for the day travel started on the morning of 16th august Even before 10 o'clock, police headquarters at Lal Bazar had reported that there was excitement throughout the city that shops were being forced to close and that there were many reports of brawls, stabbing, and throwing of stones and big bats. These were mainly concentrated in the north central parts of the city, like Raja Bazar. Kola Bagan, College Street, Harrison Road, Kulu Tala, and Banu Bazar. In these areas, the Hindus were in a majority and were also in a superior and powerful economic position. The trouble had assumed the communal character, which was to retain throughout. 
the Lynx Rally began at Octagonal Monuments at noon exactly. The gathering was considered at the largest ever Muslim assembly in Bengal at that time. In Muslim societies, historical and comparative aspects edited by Sato Sugitaka Nakazato Nariyaki writes, from the viewpoint of institutional politics, the Calcutta disturbances possessed a distinguished feature in that they broke out in a transitional period, which was marked by the power vacuum and systemic breakdown. It is also important to note that they constituted part of a political struggle in which the Congress and the Muslim League competed with each other for the initiative in establishing the new nation states while the British made an all-out attempt to carry out decolonization at the lowest possible political cost for them. Now the political rivalry among the major nationalist parties in Bengal took a form different from that in New Delhi, mainly because of the broad mass base those organizations enjoyed and the tradition of flexible political dealing in which they excelled. The meeting began around 2 pm through procession of Muslim from all parts of Calcutta had started assembling since the midday prayers. A large number of the participants were reported to have been armed with iron bars and lattice, bamboo sticks. The numbers attending were estimated by a central intelligence officer's reporter at 30,000 and by a special branch inspector of Calcutta police at 5 lakh. The latter figure is impossibly high and the star of India reporter put it at about 1 lakh. The main speaker was Khaja Nijamuddin, the chief minister Hushan Shahid Sulawardi. Khaja Nijamuddin, in his speech, pressed peacefulness and restraint but spoiled the effect and flared up the tension by stating that till 11 o'clock that morning all the injured persons were Muslims. The Muslim community had only retaliated in self-defense. Now at the initial stage of the riots, the Congress and the Muslim League appeared to be confident that they could draw on this tradition even if a difficult situation arose out of political showdown. Most probably, Direct Action Day in Calcutta was planned to be a large-scale hartal and mass rally, which is an accepted part of political culture in Calcutta, which they knew very well how to control. However, the response from the masses far exceeded any expectations. The political leaders seriously miscalculated the strong emotional response that the word nation as interpreted under the new situation had evoked. Now in August 1946, the nation was no longer a mere political slogan. It was rapidly turning into a reality both in real politics and in people's imaginations. The system to which Bengal political leaders had grown accustomed for decades could not cope with this dynamic change. As we have seen, it quickly and easily broke down on the first day of the disturbances. So we would like to thank you for hearing us and we would just request you once again to go ahead and share it as much as you can and you can guys go ahead and view it as give a give, we would love to take your feedbacks guys because that is one of the valuable thing we have the facebook channel um, uh, facebook group over there with the shama prashad enlightenment uh, federation 
we have the youtube channel with the national icon we have we are uh, we are on the instagram also so guys we just want your cooperation with us at this part of time because resources are very very uh, less however we know that we need to improve a lot but it will take certain time so we would definitely say uh, beg us for the or pardon us for this time and support us so that we can make more beautiful videos coming episode right you guys will be able to see a uh, fantastic artists will be there right uh, who you'll be guys uh, hearing them that how this song was actually sung so that's all from my end guys Thank you so much for today. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.